And now a word from our sponsor, Smarsh. For the seventh consecutive year, Gartner has named Smarsh a leader in its 2022 Magic Quadrant for Enterprise Information Archiving. Partnering with an organization like Smarsh is key for forward-thinking organizations to maintain compliance with record-keeping regulations, prepare for litigation events or e-discovery requests, and prevent risky behavior that could damage brand reputation. Smarsh stood out for the following, launching a communications intelligence platform, enhancing voice archiving, enabling compliant adoption of Microsoft Teams, and supporting direct from carrier data capture. Read the 2022 Gartner Magic Quadrant to learn why Smarsh was named a leader for the seventh year in a row and positioned furthest overall for completeness of vision. Download the report today at smarsh.com. Very early on, you have to establish the fact that you don't pay bribes, you don't pay facilitating payments regarding tax issues, and you make it real clear, and there are effects of that. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to welcome you to a special five-part podcast series, Tax Man, on the intersection of tax and compliance. In this series, I visit with tax professional Tracy Howe. Tracy has worked at multiple multinational corporations and literally lived across the globe in practicing tax. These episodes include episode one, why should tax talk to compliance? Episode two, what is transfer pricing? Episode three, why tax should have a seat at the table? Episode four, tax and supply chain? And episode five, tax and ESG. I know you will learn a lot in this series, whether you're a compliance professional, legal professional, or other non-tax professional. This special series, Tax Man on the Intersection of Tax and Compliance, is a special presentation of the Compliance Podcast Network. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox back again for a special five-part series, Tax Man, Q the Beatles. But I'm thrilled to be joined by my good friend and colleague, Tracy Howell. Tracy and I have worked together over the years. He is a tax expert extraordinaire, and he's going to teach us about the intersection of tax and compliance. So, Tracy, with that incredibly long-winded introduction, first of all, welcome and thank you for taking the time to sit down with me over this series. Hey, thanks, Tom. Hello, and uh, it's always good to be with you, Tom, and I learned a lot from you over the years, so I'm thrilled to be with you. Thank you. So, Tracy, as you know, in episode one, we're going to start with why should compliance talk to tax? So you're the tax expert. Why does this chief compliance officer need to come down, have a cup of coffee with you and talk? Well, we've worked together a lot. And one of the things that exists in organizations, publicly traded especially, all organizations have a, a uh, enterprise risk management system, you know, an ERM. And those are assessed and monitored and risk identified. And then uh, great efforts are put in place to mitigate an enterprise's risk. You know, one of the risks that multinational companies especially have is corporate tax risk, Tom. And yet a lot of times corporate tax risk remain under the radar from what would be your normal risk. And entities normally will identify the risk, uh, legal risk, uh, environmental risk, you know, transactional risk. That would be like contract risk, Tom, contracts that are fixed fee contracts, supply chain risk, the risk for critical materials, such as lithium or critical materials that can be impacted and disappear. But one of the risks that frequently doesn't get much attention in a formalized ERM program is tax risk. And those tax risks can sometimes be very substantial, especially for multinational companies who are operating in many jurisdictions. And Tom, as you know, a lot of those jurisdictions are in different stages of development economically jurisprudence, which includes tax jurisprudence, 
So there's different levels of risk associated with where's a company performing its work, what's it doing, development of the jurisdiction. Oh, there's just a lot of factors, Tom. Well, Tracy, you told us about some examples of tax risks. Why do you think it's imperative for the compliance professional or the chief compliance officer interact substantively with tax to fully identify and quantify some of these ERM risks that you listed for us? Well, Tom, tax professionals, especially experienced international tax professionals and multinational entities, are usually very good at identifying and risking and mitigating tax risk. If it doesn't get outside the visibility of a tax department, then again, the risks are elevated. Surprises are the result, Tom. Here's an example. There's a risk, a transactional risk that I worked on. It was a normal international transaction where you have a manufacturer in one country and in a foreign affiliate in another country. I'll use the example India. And the Indian affiliate contracted with a customer. The Indian entity needed for the sale of a manufactured good in the U.S. But it was a drop shipment, Tom. In other words, the sale was between the Indian entity and a third party for the delivery in a third country. So the contract went from U.S. to India to the third party in the third country. The flow of goods went a different way, Tom. The flow of goods went from the U.S. directly to the third country. Well, India reported the third party sale as income, and and then India was trying to deny the deduction for those goods because the goods never entered territory of India. In other words, India is saying, okay, we're going to tax the revenue, but we're not going to let you tax, deduct the cost of goods. And that's because the goods never entered and left were exported for the, the country. So that's a tax risk, and it was huge. For an example, that was a multi-million dollar exposure. And that's not a transaction or a risk transaction, you know, that the compliance pros like yourself would normally become aware of because the tax guys are going to go fight that and that might go on for years. So if there's not a close interaction, Tom, on transactions like that, it, they can fall under the radar of an effective ERM program. Tracy, let me pick up on a point you raised earlier that unfortunately rears its head from time to time for compliance. And that's the sophistication of different tax jurisdictions. I know you've lived and worked overseas and that you've dealt with a variety of taxing jurisdictions. Some, at least from my perspective, Canada, for instance, are pretty sophisticated. They would make aggressive arguments to you or to the company, and you would respond appropriately. And then hopefully you'd reach some resolution. But you've lived in other countries where tax regimes, at least my sense, were less sophisticated or perhaps less mature might be the right word. How does the tax department think through the individual jurisdictions? Because Many times in FCPA cases, there'll be a bribe paid to get a tax ruling or to get a tax benefit. So I was wondering if we maybe could start with, from your perspective as a tax professional, what's it like to deal with a a very mature taxing authority down to perhaps a less mature one? And it's the difference between night and day, Tom, and you used a good example. Uh, You know, I lived and worked in Canada, very mature sophisticated and developed tax regime, great environment for jurisprudence. And one of the things you learn once you go outside of the U.S. to get rid of the idea of asking the question, well, this is different. Why does it work that way? You focus on understand, find what's the game and play the game well. And I'm referring to the game being rules, laws, and regulations. You compare it to some of the other jurisdictions that I've lived and worked in, most jurisdictions will all have a tax code, but the street rules or the rules of the jungle play, those are in play. You know, one of the jurisdictions that I lived in, I'll just say, Tom, it's in the news today, but you go into the remote parts of a country that's like five time zones away where it's very cold, and you're summoned by a tax official in a very remote place, they want to audit you 
you're multinational. So you're thinking in a traditional sense, this is very organized. There's a tax law, which is you're taxable on profits. But the rules of the jungle were, okay, how much tax are you going to pay me? That's the question that was asked by tax officials. And I said, well, it's all calculated based on profits. You have the, the tax returns. He said, no, I want to know how much are you going to pay me now to resolve this? And he says, I have a budget and I have to have some contributions. And so very early on, you have to establish the fact that you don't pay bribes, you don't pay facilitating payments regarding tax issues. And you make it real clear. And there are effects of that. I mean, we have companies that do go along with that approach, which is outside the laws and regulations. And yeah, they resolve issues. But Tom, you know, that's not allowed by American companies. And some companies do, and they don't have tax issues, complicated tax issues. It's, it's more expensive. And the, and the results of following the law and following the FCPA are more expensive. But in the short run, Tom, no, they're not, because you don't, risk, you don't put the company at risk. But you have to be strong and you have to be firm. Well, Tracy, unfortunately, we are near the end of our time for this, our first episode, but I hope our listeners will join us when we're back for our next episode, where we're going to take up, frankly, one of my favorite topics, transfer pricing. Before we leave, Tracy, I was wondering if our listeners wanted any more information on yourself or some of the topics that we've talked about in this podcast, what would be the best way to connect with you? Hey, Tom, thanks a lot, man. It's really been fun to talk. I'd love to talk a lot more. Anybody have any any questions or follow-up questions, you can find me at my email address is tb, as in boy, howl, tbhowlcpa at gmail.com, or you can find me on LinkedIn, Tracy Brian Howell. Tom, I really appreciate it. Tracy, thanks, and I look forward to continuing this conversation. In this first episode of the five-part series, Taxman, the intersection of tax and compliance, we began with why compliance should talk to tax. Well, it starts with your enterprise risk management, which of course is a firm-wide strategy to identify potential risks to an enterprise from the enterprise's operations. There are various types of risk in every organization, financial risk, legal risk, environmental, financial, and risk management strategies are there to manage those risks. Tax is and can be a large part of an enterprise risk management strategy. What are some examples of tax risks? Well, number one, audit risks. Financial risk can be large. Negative issues can risk an entity's ability to operate, obtain licenses, and liability to officers and directors. There is PE risk. There's transfer pricing risks. We'll get into transfer pricing at length in another episode. And policies and business practices that are not updated and modified as tax laws change and regulations change. It is imperative that a company's compliance program interacts substantively with tax to fully identify and quantify enterprise risks. So, number one, what is the entity doing? Selling, manufacturing, licensing? Two, where is it doing this at? What's the geo regions that are sold? Three, who is doing it? Do you have an internal sales force or do you use outside consultants? How is it doing it? Licensing, selling, providing services? Four, what are the tax requirements for what we're, you're doing and how you are doing it? And five, from there, you can assess the risks of compliance and what your company is doing. Without tax having a close relationship with compliance, your compliance regime and your tax assessments can be missing material issues and risks. I hope you'll join us for our next episode, episode two, where we take a detailed look at transfer pricing. This is Tom Fox. Thanks so much for listening to this episode.